All right, let's do this. Hey kids, it's me, Rachel. Welcome back to Rachel Reads, where I read only awesome books. Today I'm reading The Sea Lion's Friend by Ed Shankman. Do you see something behind me? <gasps> Real sea lions! They're so cute. I don't know if you can hear them, but they're really noisy. <laughs> want to do is play. The Sea Lion's Friend by Ed Shankman. Let's get it on. The Sea Lion's Friend by Ed Shankman. A sea lion passes his days in the waves, and he lies on the rocks, and he sleeps in the caves. And so if he longs for a friend by the sea, well then these are the places the friend has to be. But who else finds joy in the surf and the sun? Who else thinks that lying on wet rocks is fun? The real question is, after all, in the end, who wants to be a sea lion's friend? Let's see. And that's what the sea lion wondered one day. Oh, look at his little face. He wondered when friendship would wander his way. Could a friend just appear right out of thin air? If the sea lion blinked, would a new friend be there? Did he think if he wished for a friend to come by that the friend who he wished for would fall from the sky? <laughs> Was it only pretend to believe in the end that the wishes he wished could turn into a friend? But just then, as he wondered if wishes come true, as he questioned exactly what wishes could do, as he tried to believe that a friend could appear, a seagull flew down, and he landed right here. Yes, he dropped from the skies like a total surprise and was staring the sea lion right in the eyes. It was a seagull and sea lion there face to face, head to head, toe to toe, in the very same place. Do you see them? Oh, they're so cute. They're just head to head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got this. And though one was more fin and the other more feather, they both knew somehow they'd fit perfect together. Sure, one had a snout and the other had a beak. And the one liked to bark while the other would squeak. Though I think some would say it was more of a shriek. But who cares what the sound is as long as you speak, right? Who cares if one flew while the other was grounded? Or if one was thin while the other was rounded? Or if one was tall and the other was small? Being different, you see, made no difference at all. The ways they were different were easy to name, but in time they would find they were much more the same. They would laugh at the same laughs. <laughs> they would dream the same dreams. They're both dreaming of fish. They would play the same games every day, and it seems the things one liked to do, the other liked to. They just seemed to see life from the same point of view. And sometimes they tried a few things that were new, though some worked out better than others, it's true. What do you guys think of my story? Do you like it? Okay, sorry for yelling, but, you know, I had to talk to them. They explored the marina, the buoys and boats, and they played on the rocks and the docks and the boats. Floats. Their togetherness had no beginnings or ends, and they both knew how lucky they were to be friends. Wow, that's pretty. In the mornings, they'd stumble outside in their socks and build cities of rocks that they stacked just like blocks. Then they locked all their rocks in a big blocky blocks with their socks and some clocks and a little stuffed box. Why? Now and then, just for fun, they would run a few races or slow down and quit after just a few paces. And sometimes they hid in unusual places. Of course, in some cases, they made funny faces. Ah! Do you see funny faces? <laughs> in the late afternoons, they sang beautiful tunes, serenading the seals while the loons played with spoons. Then at night, they'd retire to sit by the fire and watch as the moon would rise higher and higher. Sometimes they would spend half the day at the beach, learning of all the things they could teach. And on days when the sea lion wanted to cook, the gull entertained him with rhymes from his book. He's rapping. Mm -hmm. They were lounging around, <laughs> lounging around one late Friday in May, when the sun set like fireworks over the bay. And then once darkness fell, they reclined on a ridge, watching ships passing quietly under a bridge. The steamships were grand, and the barges were flat. They saw lightships and flagships. Ships, what's cooler than that? The tugboats were small and the cruise ships were tall, and their friendship, of course, was the best ship of all. Yes, friendship, they found, was the best part of life. For a boy and a dog or a husband and wife, for a rose and a bee and a ghost and an elf, they learned what mattered was friendship itself. This book is so long. 
And so over time, as some friends like to do, our two friends befriended some other friends too. A cat and a flea, a goose and a gander, a serious snake and a sweet salamander. A shrimp and a fish and a fly and a snail, and a duck on a dock and a whale with a pail. He had wanted one friend when he didn't have any, and now that one friendship had led to so many. Has that ever happened to you? You meet one friend and then you meet another and another and another? It was friendship, you see, that made other things fun, like a dive through the waves or a flop in the sun. And then long after all the games were begun, it was friendship that made it okay to be done. Whatever they had, the two of them shared. Whatever one broke, the other repaired. One would be brave while the other was scared. It was easy, you see, because both of them cared. It's beautiful. I don't think this book's very long anymore. Now I love that it's long. A friendship like that is a joy every day. We depend on our friends. We expect them to say. We expect them to stay. Which is why I am sure you'll agree when I say it can be very sad if a friend goes away. But that is what happened one morning, you see. When the sea lion woke up alone as can be, he knew by the feeling, he knew by the sound, that his good friend the seagull was nowhere around. Ooh, I just got chills. He looked in the cave, he looked on the rocks, and he looked through the box with the socks and the fox. And he looked to his left and he looked to his right, but it seemed that the seagull was nowhere in sight. Where else could he be? Where on earth could he go? Would the seagull come back? There was no way to know. Why would a pal he loved like a brother suddenly vanish to some place or other? Oh, look how sad he is right there. Oh, my goodness gracious. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I hope for a happy ending. But just as he heard himself questioning why, as he wondered if friendship was passing him by, he spied something small through the side of his eye, a tiny white feather that dropped from the sky. Now, feathers don't fly by themselves, as you know. There is something above when a feather's below. So the sea lion stood and he looked to the air and I think you can guess who he saw way up there. Yes, the seagull there too. And he'd brought something too, a big shiny box wrapped in purple and blue. The sea lion pulled off all the ribbons and strings and discovered they covered a cake fit for kings. Oh, a cake, how wonderful. Yes, a big chocolate cake that was teeming with candles, perched on a platter with elegant handles. It was Sea Lion's birthday. He almost forgot, but lucky for him, the seagull had not. <gasps> Is today your birthday? Woohoo! And so there they sat sharing friendship and cake. That's the best combination a baker can make. Just two special friends in their favorite place, each with a big chocolate smile on his face. So the sea lion's wish for a friend had come true. He had found a new friendship right out of the blue. I wasn't so sure that would happen, were you? Well, it just goes to show you what wishing can do. Now, some folks might think of this tale as pretend, but our heroes defend every word that was penned. And the seagull knows well that while stories must end, he will be forever the sea lion's friend. Oh, and that is the end. Oh, it is so cute. Look at the little sea lion. <laughs> and now we have to jump up and down and say, yay, we love books. We love books. Do you guys love books? Woohoo! I think they do. <laughs> See you next time.